Hello. Well, will it blend data blend in version 8 presentation from the customer conference 2013 from London, England. My name is Mills, and we'll be walking you through uh, the imprints um, and ways in which you can use blending Tableau version 8. This present focus on some ideas or uses of blending may not have thought of, uh, but can be very useful from time to time. So to cover for today, we're going to set the groundwork of what is data blending. The second is how does data blending work? Addition, what impact, if any, does this have on the database? We'll spend the bulk of our time going through use cases of different level of detail blend, calculate table calculations across uh, across different databases and data connections. I also do uh, some ideas where uh, we can do what's called the open items at any given time. So if you run a support organization, it is in the uh, inclusion of how many cases are open at any given time, given and a close date. That's typically a complex SQL operation, and we can get directly inside of Tableau with blending. Blending, uh, implement entitlement or rule security directly in Side of Tableau. First stand is what is data blending in Tableau? Data blending is Tableau's ability for you to ask analytical questions across disparate different data sources on data connections to be inside of Tableau. This is then data federation or joining data together uh, within a database or an ETL tool. In Tableau at the bottom, is queried independent of one, one another. There's primary and secondary sources. While this example only uses two, you can use as many data sources as your analysis requires. Is we actually will ask a query or ask a question in the form of a query to each database independent of one another. So in the lower left hand corner, we might ask what sales by region is. And then we ask what our, our budget or our quotas are per region. And we actually ask those questions independent of one another. And it's the results of the query that are related inside of Tableau. That is that if you have large data and small data, uh, you're not waiting for the lowest common denominator to do its work for your analysis. Um, but to continue to speak the depth of the database that we're using, we don't have to come down SQL uh, connected to Excel um, or ask a database to understand a uh, query uh, from a more complicated data source. So independent queries of different data sources with the results of those queries being blended in Tableau. Blend flow does not require the data to be moved, uh, which is very, very important. So look at some different analyses uh, and some different use cases for blending in Tableau version 8. Here in Tableau desktop, and I have a number of different connections here on the left, and what I'm going to do is actually start to build my analyses. One of the examples of data blending in Tableau is the ability to pull different information from different locations. And what we can do here is actually take a look at some very simple analysis directly in Tableau. So here's some sales information. Give me here at their regional level. Now I have population information. So are we selling enough uh, perpita in these particular areas? Is are we leaving a market opportunity on the table? And you'll see here that Tableau has, has uh, just a population data, population by state. Pre-date, you have to use the linking field to run inside of the visualization for this to work. And 
you'll notice here that we don't need to use it at all. Uh, in the chance. See over here on the left-hand side, we have our sales. And you'll see on the right-hand side that we have all of our populations for all regions, but you'll notice they're all the same number. And we haven't used a blendable field just yet. What we need is a link on which field do you want to blend on. You'll notice I'm going to blend at the state level, but I'm to use state in my analysis. When we oft, we automatically will then say, I want to blend at the state level, uh, but I'll pull it up to the regional level. And so the regional total remains the same. Relations now have become regional specific, with only having four marks per measure, rather than 50 marks per measure, which is what you would have had to do previously. Example, oftentimes situations where you want to avoid a particular type of aggregation or calculation actually inside of Tableau. Sometimes be the case because you have, for example, a um, uh, database that doesn't perform well, let's say with count distinct. I was working with a customer where they, their database was not optimized for the type of analysis. And actually go ahead um, and build a, a um, analysis where we're avoiding using count distinct. So simply, we're here to uh, the state level, out of my mapping items, and here and say, I want to count distinct my name. And I'm in here very quickly and say, I'd like to count distinct at my customer. Name. Now, when using a Tableau data extract, we've optimized that extract extract to use um, uh, fast and, and performant, but sometimes you want to connect live to your database and, and don't want to worry about that. So what we can actually do is create from this file our at the customer level to of this distinct. And we do that really simply by coming in here and saying, I'd like my customer name. We'll add those numbers. And now what I can do is select all, all choose. I come here and say paste. You'll know that was control V. I have the clipboard as a data source. See the list of all of my customers. Now remember we had talked about on sheet seven is that I count distinct my customers at the state level. Well, is can say, well, I'm interested in my customer names at the customer name level, and then can use a simple number of records computation to get exact same numbers. So if we want to verify our, our work, we'll do that. Chark labels, see that for each state, I mean the exact same result. One of them, uh, a sometimes expensive count distinct. I was using just a simple count of the number of records, fast in almost every database. Blending to avoid different aggregations if your database doesn't, in fact, perform well. Go ahead and move on to do what's called an open item analysis. And in item analysis, let's say in this example, I have an order date, so when you place the order with me, shipping date. When to legally ship the product to you. And there are various number of reasons I find myself in a situation where I have yet to ship those items to you. I have a large volume, all those types of things. And so I want to know as a manager is want to know uh, how many open orders do I have. Do is we're first going to come in here and say I want to know at my, order, at my order information. So let's bring out to the visualization. I want my particular orders. Notice here in Tableau, it will automatically try to link based on our order date. Well, we into our relationships window. We can relationships 
relationships. Notice here that I match order to ship, ship date allows this to do. And let me show you how to do that. You can say, I want my order date to with my ship date. And do is it will line up all of the orders that ship with the orders that were placed, which allows us to do simple math to create the debit. So we choose to blend on ship date and order date and come out and say, I want to know the number of records. So any given single day, the number of things ordered and the number of things shipped. Now comes just a simple iteration of created fields for these analyses. It's number of records, shipped orders, and tell us if you have a negative number for our shipped orders, so let's take a look at that calculation. If these two things equal each other, then count my zeros. So it ships on the exact same date that it was ordered, we don't have any carryover. We don't have a plus of orders to, to fulfill. I'll count up the number of records and take away the number shipped. So this is the record records from orders and the number of records from shipping. So what we're saying here is that if, if we order 10 things and shipped 8, the return here would be a 2. Now we then say this net gain of shipments. What we'll do is say the number of orders plus how many we shipped. So if I have a carryover of 2 and then another number of orders from number of records um, from, from the order table, uh, then have 10 orders plus 2 from yesterday. So here we can do is take our net gain loss and shipments, and those to understand we're typically running right about here. Uh, we have between 5 and 10 surplus orders daily. We also use a T calculation to do a running total. So in this data set, I'm continually falling further and further behind. Uh, continue to have a problem like that, I would hire more staff, invest in new systems, those types of things. Um, your data should show uh, some really fun examples here. This is a very complex join and a very expensive operation for the database. But with a connection and then a duplicate of that connection, we can now blend and get this open item analysis very simply. So now our last example uh, for the session and that is using Tableau uh, against an entitlement table. So if you have in your data a users, the regions that they're able to uh, work with within this information, those are the data based on the user. So let's an example of this. So that we'll want to do is come and say I'm interested in my regional information. I'm also interested in my state information. Now I will that are only work in the central region, and I only want them to be able to see the central data and the east, south, or west. And so I come in here and add, add some labels. Notice that Chris belongs to the central area in the east. Sam South and William the West. Well, what I do is create what's called a user filter directly inside of Tableau. Now, in the right hand corner, you will see that I'm logged into the Tableau server. The server has a list of all of my users. And you'll notice that Chris is in here, uh, and Aaron is in here, Aaron William is in here. Okay, so it's all my users. I write in Tableau a simple entitlement calculation. Calculation where name equals integer, and we can come in here and say, I want my title element to be filtered. Let me drag that down here. Actually, that on the primary, and what we'll do is you'll look up the manager 
with uh, you have and you look rows apart from itself. So you're looking up at the exact row and you're passing that against the username function, which calls the username um, of the tablet closed server. And here and say, I'm interested in those where that condition is true. When I OK, you'll see that now my visualization is focused just for Chris. If check for Erin, she's just the eastern state. Now if I check for myself, that settlement table had nothing for me. I had no right to see any of the data. This is how that will persist when you publish to the Tableau server. So you can have one visualization, serve needs of n number of people, so right inside of Tableau using data blending and user filtering. What this allows you to do is maintain a single entitlement table in your organization, any database of your choosing, and use it against any data, any format that you want to um, that you want to uh, restrict user access to particular rows of the data. So, hopefully, this session you've learned some new things and new capabilities about what Tableau version eight uh, allows you to do. And at least for the last three examples, the avoiding count distinct open items analysis and your blending for security options, some new things or some possible uses of data blending you haven't seen before. Thank you. Within the uh, pray on will it blend data blending in version 8, if you have any questions, comments, or ideas, about how data blending can uh, can work for you, uh, let us know um, on our forums, uh, on our website, or, uh, or through your team of Tableau employees working for you. Uh, thank you, and have a great, great day.